So I don't know who this is. They didn't, uh, yeah, so they should be able to have access now. Okay, let me just text them back. Not a problem. And also, if they have um, issues accessing, they can also um, view on YouTube. Um, and speaking of which, we are now live on YouTube, so you're all set to begin. We are live. All right. Uh, we multitasking here. So let me start with the formality uh, regarding uh, COVID remote meeting information. So I'm Norm Corbin. I'm the chair of the Northboro Historic District Commission. Um, this open meeting of the Northboro Historic District Commission is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, the town of Northboro has been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. All members of the Historic District Commission are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows the Historic District Commission to meet entirely remotely so long as re reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to the Not For Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link listed on the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. All right. So it turns out it's Bruce that is not here. Is he here yet? No. So Jim, I, is Bruce, uh, is there a way of sending an information for Bruce so he can link in? Yeah, not a problem. I can um, resend the Zoom link to him now. Okay. Uh, and I'll do that. Yep, if he has any issues, um, I can, uh, I'll, I'll check back in momentarily. I'll send that now. It should come um, in, in a few minutes, uh, within the minute. Okay. All right. So first thing I'm supposed to do is make sure everybody's here. So let's see, uh, just give me a thumbs up or a hi or something. I'll start with uh, Brian Smith. Hi. All right, Brian Swanson. Here. Millie. Here. Bob. Here. Leslie. Hola. Ed Harlow. Present. And Mike Deshano. Present. And we are waiting for Bruce to join us. Um, Ed, do you know if Gordon's coming? Um, I will send him a text. He told me he was. And yep. I said, Sorry, he's in the uh, attendee. I just moved him over to panelists, so you should be seeing him shortly. Ah, there he is. Uh, <laughs> that worked. If Bruce is also having trouble, you can have him um, uh, join as an attendee using the link on the agenda, and then I can move him over as a panelist as well. Okay. But I, I did send another email to him. Oh, good. I think the bugaboo I even had was it, the email now came in on a, it came in a, with uh, through something called webinar, and it was kind of new. I had to go looking for it just. Okay. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, everything's a little, keeps changing. That's all right. So uh, the first part of the meeting is uh, a public hearing regarding the historic district. Hi, Gordon. How you doing? I'm doing okay. I've been listening for five minutes, but I guess I was just on the, the <laughs> listen part. Or well, you haven't. Uh, now you're now you're a participant. So now you know I'm here. Now we know you're here. <clears throat> so let me. Be because these are all taped, I, I need to give some background as to why we're having a public hearing tonight. So for those who aren't aware, um, if a property is, in the, is within the historic district and they're gonna make some changes to the exterior of the building that can be viewed from the street, then those changes need to be reviewed by the historic district commission. So today we have uh, the first parish church is installing some gutters, which is a change to the exterior of the building. So they're here to uh, review uh, what their plan is and to get a thumbs up from the Historic District Commission. Um, 
So that's the reason we're here. And how do we want to run this, Gordon, in Ed? I have all the information you sent, or do you want to uh, do you want to provide it? Uh, do you want to show the slides, or do you want me to show the information? Or just the, what, what we want to do doesn't matter to me. Uh, I would prefer that you sh you show it if that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay. If I miss something, because uh, I have all the information you sent me, Ed, if I miss something, uh, then um, let me know and I'll find it. Will do. And let me just check on Mr. Bruce. All right. Not in yet. Uh, okay. I got to do the shared screen thing and we can figure that out. So let me start with uh, this. Have it up and when you go. I can pull it up if it's a problem. Well, I, I've got you on my screen, but I'm trying to figure out how to get that onto the shared screen. And I usually can do it, but it's not up and up this time. There it is, hiding. All right, we all see the schematic? Yes. All mm -hmm. right. So if I increase it a little bit. Okay, Bruce is still not uh, coming in. All right, he's having trouble. So this is a schematic which shows the meeting house in the parish hall of the uh, Unitarian property. And the two markings are where they want to put gutters. Uh, one is over one of the entrances to the parish hall, I think it's to the kitchen, and then over one side of the meeting house. Uh, so that's the location. I should have some pictures that were sent. Uh, this is one of the entrance. So you, you, are you still seeing my screen? Yeah. Are you looking at a picture, a photograph of a door? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope. Aha. I'm still seeing the same. Uh... Yeah, that's the. Uh, Right this way. And drawing. Okay. Now you see the door? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Progress. I got to unshare the screen and then, yeah, we're learning here. Why so you're you looking at a desktop? gutter above, are you looking at a gutter above this door. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And let's see if I stop the share and go back. And Norm, I think if you just share your desktop, you don't have to keep going off and on again. You just share your whole desktop instead of just one window. All right. <clears throat> Who can share? Well, it's not giving me that option. I don't know where that is, uh, Leslie. So we'll go back and forth if I can do that. Oh, it'll say screen one. It, it, oh, sorry. So it's like screen one, screen two, whatever, or specific windows. If you do the whole screen, I think it'll. Yeah, I'm not having luck with that. So let me see what we can do here. I can share them if you want. Do you have them? You would have them because I sent them to you. If you can do it easier than me, more power to you because. Uh, let me just find them. So, yep, here we go. Let me. Uh, hang on, let me try this. They're all as attachments, so it's not going to be totally smooth, but here. <laughs> all right. So there's one. Got it. Thank you got you. it or you got mine? I am looking at the photograph of the uh, the building. Right. So do you want me to show that? I mean, here's oh, so here's you're the email. Me, the... Please show that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Everybody sees that? Yeah. All right. So that's the other location of the gutter. Ed, you might explain 
what people are looking at there. Sure. So this is the, the, the church from between the parish hall and the church itself. And that's, yeah, that's the big gutter. That's where the big gutter would go. The, the, the thought being, we have a water uh, infiltration into the parish hall cellar, and there's a tunnel that connects the two buildings underground, and water is coming out of the tunnel and during heavy rains. So we're trying to get rid of all the water that we can from between the buildings, so this is less likely to happen. So that's why we're, we're here today. Hmm. Ed, you might explain yeah, sure. why why that unpainted wood is showing there. Oh, because um, I didn't do something I should have, which has come to you guys before. <laughs> <laughs> we did this, and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot a step. I'm a bad person. So um, yeah, that's so the what what that is. Um, that's some um, uh, some light carpentry that the um, gutter installer did to prepare for gutters. So there there would there had never been gutters there before. Um, that wood will allow the gutters to be attached firmly to the I guess it's called the soffit. Um, yeah, so that's why it looks the way it does. Um, and you'll see below um on the left there's a, our new door with uh, our wheelchair ramp and we're, we're trying to also keep it safer for um an icy weather that it's ice icy water isn't just dropping down onto that uh, doorway which is ha happening now and happening over our kitchen door as well do you want me to show other pictures sure okay so that was that one we've got actually um if i do this so that was that one all right so which one do you want me to show um well well um you know why don't you show the kitchen a little larger if you would please oh this this one oh either one yeah if you could uh, make either of them one of them larger that's a good one uh oh actually that doesn't include well there's one that's very similar to this um where um where we have um ice for yeah that's that's the one there's this is like really problematic like now because um ice is forming on the um doorstep as you can see if you scroll it down a little bit oh sorry i was um, looking at the gutter it's <laughs> yep. right, it, it dribbles down it freezes it causes a, yeah. a hazard and there's actually a school using the you know the montessori school is there now so it's um mm -hmm. it's problematic keeping that clear all the time because it um it builds up with water ice and we just have to keep trying to keep it as safe as we can. Yeah, it wasn't a problem today, but it was a problem when you took these pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> A month it was. or so ago. Yeah. You got, you, got your issue, you got two pretty good issues here. One is safety, and the other one is uh, water infiltration. Yes. So uh, tell us then about uh, the gutters, the style of the gutter or the color of the gutter, just that kind of basic stuff. They are... Um, five inch aluminum gutters in white. They will be seamless, you know, constructed on site. Um, and they should uh, handle all the water there that, that the roofs um, shed. Um, we still have to, there is a, a matter of where the water will exit because if you go to the site, there's really no good place not, not a great place for it to exit because the street is right there um, to the right of that picture that you see um so we we need to get it away from the building and um that's that's a separate issue that we're not really addressing today per se but um the gutters will make it um should keep the water out of the cellar more and keep this safer and there they will be white so they should blend in the building nicely they're they're they'll be within the style of the of the building, so to speak. Um, you know, as far as aluminum gutters look, they look pretty good. So um, does anybody else on, on our committee have any other questions before I open it up to the public hearing? I, I just have a question, Ed. Is the water in the tunnel area, is that coming from the meeting house? <laughs> roof area or is that coming from the parish hall or is it coming from both into that area well we it's pr more likely we don't know for sure it's coming out of the tunnel which connects the two it's more likely to be in the downhill side which is the parish hall 
Um, we're just trying to get rid of as much water as possible while also making the ramp, the new wheelchair ramp safer. Yeah. All right, if we have no further questions, uh, uh, Jim? Hello. Yep. Hey, uh, is there anybody uh, with their hand up from the general public? So I currently see zero attendees, um, but if there happens to be somebody there or somebody on YouTube and or if they're calling in, they can use the, um, I believe it's star nine for the raise your hand feature. Um, and if they raise their hand now, I can acknowledge them. But again, I'm seeing no attendees, so I don't believe there is any comment at this time. All right, well, let's take, uh, since you gave, if anybody's watching, you gave them how to get it, get through for the phone. Let's give them like uh, 30 seconds or so to see if we get a response. How's that sound? And in the meantime, 30 seconds, I will contact our new buddy here. Let's see if I can call uh, Bruce up. Yeah, if Bruce wants, he can go to the uh, Town of Northboro website to the Historic District Commission. Um, if he pulls up the most recent agenda for tonight, there should be a meeting link at the top. They'll bring him into Zoom as an attendee, and then I'll be able to promote him to panelists from that. And uh, I am still seeing zero attendees at this time. Hey, Bruce, um, we can get you in if you were available. Because uh, what the Jim will do is he will move you over to uh, participate somehow. All right. Yeah, yeah, it came in funny for me anyway. It comes on the webinar, which is weird. It's something different. But anyway. We we miss you so. All right. <laughs> we need him to take the we need him to take the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. It, it appears we're we're not having any uh, public hearing participation. So, if I could have someone make a motion in regards to the gutters uh, and the property of the Unitarian Church. I I just have a couple couple quick questions. When oh, good, when, are you, no when are you problem. looking to start this? Um, we were looking at school April vacation, but there may be something else going on in the church that does not allow that. Um, so uh, probably a week, a weekend, our, our, um, the gutter person that we've been, um, um, I've been talking with, he's basically ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Anytime. And how long do you think that something like this would take? I think... Um, I think from what he told me, two days, um, there's painting that has to be done in above freezing weather and then the installation itself. Right. Well, hopefully you'll have good weather coming up soon. I, I hope so too. <laughs> Looks like Bruce has joined us. Here he is. Woo! <laughs> Playing hard to get tonight. <laughs> um, so could someone make a motion regarding the uh, gutters for the, for the church buildings? I make a motion that we approve the request for, uh, application for certificate for the roof gutter improvements at the Unitarian Universalist Church in Northborough. Second. All right. I do the roll call vote. So bear with me. We got, uh, Mike. Approve. Leslie. Approve. Um, Ryan Smith. Approved. Millie. Approved. And Brian Swanson. Approved. Um, Bruce, you did, did you hear any of the conversation before, Bruce? No, and, I, I'm and, not going to uh, abstain. And, and I approve. So um, you're all set to go with this project. And I have that little paperwork I have to fill out. And from there, you're good to, well, you're good to go right now. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks, you all. Thanks, Gordon. You're making okay. it easy for us. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Okay. We get on to our regular agenda now. I good just, uh, can, I, can I check on that, Leslie? Leslie uh, moved and Millie seconded. Is that right? Correct. May I ask a question? An unrelated question. Millie, we miss your restaurant terribly. 
I, I bet everybody says that to you. <laughs> Are you coming back? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're, we're looking at third or fourth week in April. I just got all the staff back on. So oh, yeah. that must have been uh, so difficult. Yeah. 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 But I'm happy to have everybody back. And I had I got their schedules aligned. So yes, we're coming back. <laughs> all right. Good. Thank you for persisting. Right. <laughs> you had a lot to the town. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. All right. Thank Take you all care, for your man. work. Yeah. All righty. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. So now we'll get the, so we'll close the public hearing. we close that topic. And now we're moving on to our regular meeting agenda. So the first item is meeting minutes. Um, were you able to resend them, Bruce? Or should we hold off? Uh I, I did send them out uh, just, you know, just a few minutes before seven. Um, okay. There's been some strangeness with some people getting the attachments sometimes and not other times. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what's going on, um, but I just resent them just before the meeting. Okay. So I, I, I could open these up for whatever reason. Um, there was only a few of us. It wasn't consistent. Some of us got them. Some of us did not. So, um, so I got, I got the ones from, uh, from what would have been February, but it looked like there was a typo on those. Did anybody see that? The February 17th meeting min minutes. Uh, I saw, I didn't see a typo. Did you? Well, it just says January 17th, I think. At least mine did. Oh, oh mine says February. Yeah, mine says February. Oh, that's interesting. Don't ask me why. Mine says January. Is it the right one? It's the one for. Uh, it's the. It, it, is it the January meeting minutes you're looking at? Because that's we we're, we're, we're going through no. that one. No, because I have those. Those are from January twenty first. So this one says. Can you read it? Well, what was it? January? Let me see. I'm not very good at this screen sharing. Does that show? <laughs> January 17th. That's what mine's got. Huh. But, All right. So we may have to make an edit uh, on one of them somehow. But also on that one, and, and if I don't have the right things up, I'm not on the list of being present, but yet I'm there. All right, so let's see what we can do. Uh, I've, I've got a, I can live edit this here. I can, you know, either screen share or just take comments, live edit it here, and then we can move to accept as amended or I can resend and we just approve next month. Well, let, let's let's start with the February one and, uh, and see how much work it is. It's probably just a couple of lines here and there, I hope. All right, so. I'm, uh, I'm just proofreading it really quick. <clears throat> this, this is the one that I remember. So I, I'm okay with my version of the February 17th meeting minutes. I don't have... February 17th. I got March uh, 4th. Okay. 2020, uh, 2021. I sent out, uh, was it yesterday that I, that I uh, attempted, I guess, to send out both of them uh, in, in preparation for uh, tonight? So if, uh, if we have some confusion, we can just delay till next month and resend yeah. them. Cause you, you just resent them at 701, something like that, Bruce. Yeah. So maybe not everybody's looking at them. And why don't, yeah. Why, why don't we do that? Um, it makes next sense. End, when I send them out, if you could all just let me know whether you got the attachments, you know, all, both attachments or not. Uh, so I know what's, um, what's happened. Um, I, it's, uh, it's, I don't, I don't know if there's something with going on with email or what, but, um, so well, not there, there is always something going on with email. So maybe it was your turn. <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry about it. We'll square it away next month. 
Fair you're still gonna be. You're still doing a heck of a job, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll we'll pass on the meeting minutes uh, and go to the next step. Old business. Interpretive signs. Brigham Street burial ground. All right. Um, I did. Let me see if I can do the sharing. Okay, uh, Leslie. I'll try sure. to do the sharing on my end. Um, find it. <coughs> it intentionally opened everything up so it would be easy. That was my mistake. All right, Leslie, I'm going to have to ask you to help me out. I'm looking for the image of uh, the, the actual information from that. Uh, so which one? I'm sorry. What are you, which one are we looking for? Let me see. Hold on. I'm going this back. Is part to, two. I, the part two stuff. <laughs> let me think for a second. The expose quote and the talk yeah, about the Brigham it's Street. The part, it's the part two stuff. Yep, I got it. Hang on, let me just pull it up. Ah, I finally, right, okay. So I'm looking for the Brigham Street, uh, not the qu quote, but the final image, the most recent image. Yep, I got them, hang on. All right. Okay, can you see it? Uh, here, it's coming. That's it, good job. Let me make sure, blow it up so I can make sure it is the correct one and we're not looking at a early version. Make sure it's not the January version instead of the February version. Why am I not? Usually you just hit the wheel and it goes bigger. Why is it not going bigger? View, tools. Page display. Huh. How about Zoom? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm just supposed to do the wheelie thing. Why is it not working? Anyway, uh, view, Zoom. I thought Zoom was to go to the Zoom meeting. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it online with just my two fingers. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, I just want to make sure we do any discussion that it's the correct one. All right. Is this the right one? Uh, scroll it up some more, please. Well, you're demanding, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's because I need to see the <laughs> replica. I need to see. Not, not magnified. I needed to scroll it up. To see. Oh, 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 sorry. Boy, I, I can't wait to be face to face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got here. All right. Where am I going? Good. All right. This is the one. Because there's several of them floating around. I'll make sure it's the right one. So... Um, we went through a variety of comments on this. I want to make sure uh, we're all on the same page. Well, I have a new one, actually, which you're going to kill me. <laughs> no, I, 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 this is the time to do it. So is first, this I want to make sure really we covered this? all the ones we mentioned in the past. All right, before we get to Oh, you want to do that first? Okay, all right. Please. So you notice how the uh, image of, of the gravestone when you had it blown up is uh, pixelated, right? That was one of our concerns. And also the map was also pixelated, but it turns out is when they convert it to a PDF, I never realized this, they lose a lot of resolution. So the images themselves are accurate. Okay. They're not, they're not mm -hmm. gonna be a problem because this one doesn't look clear, but that's not the case. Okay, there good. Were, there were two dates in the table that we wanted to fix. They weren't, in, they were inconsistent with the other markings and um, they are correct now. One was the November and oh, oh, that's good. They were down the bottom and they're all marked correctly. See, it says 01 of May and 07 of July. There were two that weren't right. So those were fixed. Mm -hmm. Scroll up a little bit more so you can see below the sign. I want to see below the table. So let's see what we're doing with this. This was pretty much reworded, this section. So, um, we had quite a discussion about the status. 
So it now reads status, probability the person is located in the burial ground. And then below it are the three possible statuses, known, probable, and possible. So they, the wording was changed a little bit on that and I need to know if that's uh, clear. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's much better yep. for me. Yep, I like it. Yeah. And then I right. uh, continue to scroll up uh, so I can see the. Uh, okay, so then we have this uh, the funded by the Northville Community Preservation Act. The text the typing was changed so that it's upper and lower case, and then we also put in the logo for the town. I think those are the big those are the big changes. Um, and Leslie, you said there might be something we need to modify. Well, it occurs to me that the heading on this table, do we need to say this? Because we're standing at the Brigham Street Old Burial Ground in Northborough, Massachusetts. Does it need to say that on there or is that okay? I think it needs to say it. Okay. It's right. kind of redundant, but if somebody's not really familiar, it just makes it perfectly clear. So I, they don't I, know where they are. Well, <laughs> uh, okay. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's wrong. It might be extra, but I don't mind extra. Okay, all right. But it's, you know, it's worth bringing it up. So the where, where we are with it now is um, if we if we give them the okay tonight, uh, they can start the construction. So it's, um, I'm I'm looking now to make sure uh, there are no other little hiccups. scroll out so we can sort of see see it all in one Pretty pretty. Should be good. Looking forward to this one. So does anybody have any additional comments, concerns? Looks good. Looks good. All right. Can uh, someone make a motion to accept this uh, contract for this uh, sign? I make a motion to accept the contract for the Brigham Street burial sign. I want to mention something first, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so for the formatting of these paragraphs, like here I noticed this, like the would have fit here. Like why is this supposed to be a new paragraph and that's why it starts again? Or is it just a wrapping issue? I'm wondering if it should be block typed or at least this should be, this the should be up there if it's the continuation. And if it's not a continuation, then we need a little blank line in there. All right, well, let's just read it and see if it's the same sentence. Mm -hmm. The problem with block typing or whatever it's called is then you tend to end up with lots of extra spaces in between, but it sometimes looks cleaner also. You know what I mean? Like the right margin being. So uh, what we need to decide though is uh, is that two, two paragraphs or is it a continuation of the first paragraph, right? That's the, that's the question. There's kind of two questions I was asking, but yes, that's the one of actual content. I, I think that's, yeah, a separate, that last sentence doesn't belong tagged on to the one paragraph. So it needs a blank line. Okay. Or a space, yeah. That's not a problem. Anything else catch your eye? Again, just what I was saying about maybe blocking it all. Well, I would rather just put the space and, and, and not start changing a lot of other things. Okay. You're talking about paragraph blocking, right? Exactly, so it's, yeah. So it's, yeah. Well, that sometimes you get words that are too that are very spread out. It's hard That's to- That's what I was saying, you get a lot of spaces in there. It's hard to tell until you actually see it. Yeah, exactly. 
So okay. essentially what we're asking is after the word depressed plots, put a space. But yeah, it's a new paragraph. It needs a blank line between the paragraphs. That's what I mean. I, I, I'm going to say space on the blank line. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Like like in the first column. Right. In the first section. All right. Um, I can get back to her for that. We can still vote on this, and I can make it, you know, that she changes that and runs it by me before she actually goes to uh, construction. I don't think we need to see it again. I think, uh... Yeah, I would agree. I've, I've been communicating with the woman and I asked her if we were a, a potentially a challenging customer and she said, absolutely not. <laughs> She'd rather get this right because if you have a mistake when it's made, then it's a bugaboo. So. Um, the only, only other thing that's looking funny to me, that second paragraph, the, the letter L is popping up funny in all of them. I guess it's just the way the L is being presented. See it? Uh, where are you talking about? Any place that the the letter L is used. Oh, any place. Thin. It's it's like it's a different font. Yeah, it looks thinner. Oh, right, the lowercase L, yeah, like right here. Yeah, that must be. Must be something with the. Yeah, yeah it looks fine when you blow it up. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Actually, if anything, it looks yeah. Well, this one it's yeah. I think it's yeah, fine. Yeah, it looks uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> no, I mean, even these two side by side, one looks fatter yeah. than the other one. It's strange. It's just a graphics thing, I think. Okay, so I will make the change with, uh, oh, I won't make a change. I will request that they, they fix that uh, paragraph section up. And so we have a motion to accept it. We haven't had it second yet. Second. All right, thank you, Leslie. And I do the, I got to do the roll call vote. So... This is uh, again purchase the the Michael. Mike, approve. Leslie, yes. Bruce, yes. Ryan Smith, yes. Millie, yes. Ryan Swanson, yes. And myself, yes. We're good to go. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, making progress. So that's the interpretive sign for Brigham Street. Now we get the Howard Street. So I have a proposal from the company of what the cost would be. Um, and uh, part, it's still in part two. It's still in part two, Leslie. Oh, it's still in part two? Yep. It's uh, oh, expose quote. I, already, I just did that. Oh, I, I just closed it. Sorry, I thought it was the same thing. Nope. That's it. Thank you. Sure. I like delegating this. <laughs> <laughs> so the construction, it's also still an aluminum cabinet. It's going to have uh, four legs. It's very similar to the design of what's there, only what's there is made out of pressure treated plywood. Um, it's going to be at an angle. They're looking at uh, the price of the, the price of the sign is $2,325 installation costs, which is what was uh, the town would prefer that somebody ins installs it is $600 for a total of $2,925. I did get an estimate for this project back when we initiated it about a year and a half ago uh, from an online company that builds similar things. They came back with, uh, let's see. oh, it's not that easy. Oh, so I got to step back a minute. So this, this sign is uh, $2,925. And it's gonna be coming out of the same funding that funds the Brigham Street sign, which was $1,812. So the total expenditure for expose for the two signs is $4,737. You get that? So online, when I had them quote online, I had them quote for both signs, and they had, they came up with a price of five thousand one hundred and sixty dollars. Oh wow! So it's about uh, three hundred and some odd dollars more. So there's um, there's I, I see no advantage of working with the online people, especially when we can work with Expose at a mm -hmm. lower price right. and keep the same company. So the the good news is we're going to have a total expenditure of about four thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars but we budgeted $8,000. So uh, 
we're going to be giving some money back to CP to the CPA part of money, which is good. So I'm looking for questions regarding this and if we should vote that they will make the sign, uh, then we're going to have to go just like the other one through the details when they when they do a mock-up and then we look at the, the mock-up and make some, some adjustments at that point. So we, we already resolved the angle issue, right? That we decided we yes, were going to do they, it. Yeah, they're going to do it. Uh, they're going to do it at an, at an angle. Um, okay, okay. As opposed to a, a vertical sign. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions on this? It doesn't appear to be. Uh, should we make a motion that we we'll accept this uh, quote? And make a motion that we accept the quote for the Howard Street burial ground sign from Expose Sign and Graphics. Second. second. Oh. <laughs> go, go get Eat Brian you. Smith on that second. <laughs> wow. All right, then we'll do the roll call vote. So share your own screen, Norm. Huh? <laughs> share your own screen. <laughs> All right. Roll call vote. Mike. Uh, approve. <clears throat> Leslie. Aye. Bruce. Mr. Smith. Approved. Millie. <coughs> yes. Brian Swanson. Approved. And I approve. So the next step is for them to do the mock-up. Um, Leslie, I'm also going to send you uh, another, there was a whole section of it that was a lot of text. I'm going to send you that for your teen eye to look at. And I'll, I'll have them do the mock-up after you and I look at it and then Everybody, when, once we get the mock up, this is the one we did from the photos, and then you went back and filled in. So that's it, yeah. We've done yeah. it already. So we've done that this needs one. to okay. be reviewed again. Okay. Uh, we'll move along with that. All right, so that's good. We're making progress on these things. Love it. Mm -hmm. All right, let me see if I can share the screen for the preservation plan. This should be interesting. All right. Yeah, Norm, when I, I hit share screen. Yeah. And I see, I have two screens. So I see screen one, screen two, but then I see all the individual files that I've opened on my, if you share your whole screen, it should let you share anything that is on your screen. So let's see if I do this. Can you see this? This is the preservation plan? Yeah. All right, I'm well, learning. Sure. Thanks, Leslie. Sure. <clears throat> I set this as a PDF form because I didn't want anybody to do all of the nitpicking editing on this thing, not yet. I want, I want to get an idea if I'm going down the right path, all right? That's the real intent here. Um, am I, does it flow properly? Did I miss something that's really obvious that I just didn't get on? Uh, so that's kind of where it is at this point. Um, so there it goes. Uh, I'll start, when I, I'll blow this up a little bit. Start with the first page. So this is the committee. And the second section here is the priorities. Those are, those are the ones that came to my mind. Those aren't necessarily the, the top 10 that we would finalize with, but I just wanted to put something in place to get people to think about that. We don't need to go through that now. That's not really what I want to do tonight. But I just want you, when you guys look at it, if you think of something and it should be really important, then I'd like to have like a top 10 hit kind of a thing. Um, I've asked Bob Light to put together a purpose of a pre uh, historic preservation plan. I asked him to go through the state plan. There's probably information in there you can call out. Um, overview of North Borough history. I've got some information that I got from Beth in something from another report we had that I think I can just cut and paste in. I'm not worried about that part yet. Then the next section is you know, there has been a lot of history, there has been a lot of preservation of North Pole history over the years, and I kind of wanted to set that background in here. I think that's something we need to address what the historical society's done, what commission's done, Community Preservation Act funding that's been uh, a godsend for us, and then what 
all the town laws, the town bylaws that we have that affect the preservation of historic things. It's all background information, but I think it warrants putting it into here. But the key part of all of this, and, and then I just pulled this from our website. This is what the historic district's responsibility is. And that's from our website. Um, if you have a better idea, we can do that, but I, I really want to meet this part right here. The historic preservation plan. This, this is the guts of the plan. This is where we tell people what we think has to be done for the next years or so. Um, I listed the resources I've been using for finding out this information. There's a lot that's been done already. I'm trying. I'm really trying to steal as much as I can from all of these documents because it's yeah. not why we do it if it's already there. Just cut it and paste it and reference it. This, this next paragraph actually comes right verbatim out of the master plan. And it's, um, it talks about the challenges of historic preservation between historic preservation and uh, allowing for growth and evolution of a community. Uh, it's, it's pretty generic, but it kind of makes you realize it's, there's a lot of other interactions that occur here. So. The way I set it up is these are the, the basic goals that we should try to meet. Um, I put educational goals, then I just stole right out of the master plan the, goal, the goals that were key to us, uh, goal one. Goal one is, it really has a lot to do with um, conservation more than preservation, historic preservation, but uh, it's part of what we, we need to be aware of. Uh, the second one, HNCH2, is really the core part of our program. Uh, NCH3, it's repurposing some town buildings. It's, it's good that it's in there, uh, but it's not. It kind of rolls back to the previous one. And the same thing with the last one, uh, four. It's uh, just how do you coordinate between the different organizations. So as far as I'm concerned, this one right here, which I'll, I'll highlight, that's the one we really need to be focusing in on. So I'm going to go right to that one. And, and my apologies, you said those were references, those are designations from the master plan? Yeah, somewhere I mentioned that those codes are uh, right up here, right here, <coughs> but the code marking is. And I okay, want to from the master plan, okay. Yeah, so just so you know, so that's uh, natural, cultural, historic, goal two. Natural okay, okay. historical three. I wanted to be able to go right back to the master plan. This is extraordinary, by the way. <laughs> this yeah. really, this is, this is fantastic. A lot of work. Well, yeah. it's not if you steal everything. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to rewrite it, yeah. But by going six months after the master plan, this is easy. Going six months before the master plan, this would be really difficult. Mm. So all I've done is, so for natural cultural category goal one, is I, I reiterate what the goal is, which in this case is natural resources. And then I, I listed what their general goals are, because the master plan is not specific. It's very, gener it's very general. There's no timelines or things like that. Really. <clears throat> So for this one, which is really it has to do more with um, conservation, Leslie, you're you on conservation or open space? Open space. So for this one, really the goal is to just interact with conservation committee, trails committee, open space, parks. You know, so we're all aware of each other's business, so we link each other together. So that's the real goal is communication. That's what I thought. And this one is, like I said, this is really the key one. Um, first one is prepare a historic preservation plan. That's the only thing in here that I actually put a drop dead date on. It's at the end of the fiscal year, June 30th, which would be the last day of the fiscal year. Is that 2022? Yeah, 2022. We can get it done before that, but I just 
wanted to, we, we just wanted to recognize some kind of a uh, timetable. I'll go through these a little bit slower. And I'll blow it up a little bit easier. So what's written up in this section right here, this is verbatim out of the historic, uh, excuse me, out of the present master plan. This is all right out of the master plan. And all I've done is say, okay, well, how do we meet those goals? This one is promote awareness of North Bros history by publishing and facilitating publications of articles in local papers, installing historic related signs, collaborating with other organizations and agencies. So I started to list the things we should continue to do or we've done in the past. So um, take a look, quick look through that. Is there something that might be missing? Oh, Norm, I had a question on um, how close is this supposed to resemble the Massachusetts historic plan? You had sent me that and it's, well, it's interesting reading. It's, I, I don't, we don't have to use that format they're using, but there should be, if there's some key links in that document that we should mention in this document, that would be important. Well, the reason I bring it up is that they made a point that they do that plan. This is the historic Pre preservation plan. Yeah. You sent me a copy of that. Yeah. And they mentioned that this is done every five to seven years. Yeah. That's correct. And then they said in the last period, which was, um, I guess it was the, the one step seven years ago, they changed the format. So they have um, various sections. So your plan, what you wrote here looks like it follows having a section one of introduction and then their section four, which is goals and objectives. What they, what they have is um, major accomplishments, section two and challenges ahead, section three. Uh, I was just going to throw this out that since the since the uh, individual town plans somehow I think are supposed to follow the state plan, should we try to follow their sections? Um, I can. I'm not sure we have to follow their their sections. I could take a look and see. You know, I could change some of the terminology, but what I what I proved there is a section here that's going to that I, we're going to write, it's going to talk about everything that's been done in the past. So, that's so that would be really good. That would be major accomplishments. That well, it, it, they're calling it major accomplishments. I call it uh, North Pro, right now it's written as North Pro Preservation pre-2021. So it's going to include everything that was done uh, prior to this year. Okay, that, that's good. So it's a different title, but I think it's the same kind of information. But we can... We can change it. We, you know, if we all feel comfortable that, that maybe some commonality with uh, the state is a good idea, we, we can do that too. And that's part of the reason for today. I just want to get uh, that kind of feedback in. So what I'm kind of hoping to get from you uh, all is um, emails that say, you forgot to add this in, or have you considered this? We should be looking at this, you know, that kind of thing. I, I, so when you look at it, I'm looking for that kind of thing, or like what Bob just mentioned, the flow, should it be, should the flow be more like the state plan or should it be more like our own plan? Um, okay. This is great content. It yeah. really is. Yeah, I. And I mentioned before, I, I went through some old notes from when I started on this commission fifteen years ago, and we have already those old notes are just thrown in here. It's it's stuff that old previous members have already put together on a list. It's just that we never formalized it. You know, it's just in a spreadsheet. Um, Norm, can you go back to page one? Yeah, H1. Page one. Hey, oh, page one. First page. Yeah, I didn't put, I gotta put pages on this thing. I, that's an oversight, there's no page numbers. So page, you tell me when it's page one. The first page. 
the cover title. Cover. Yep. That one. That one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, scroll down. So here um, for the top ten, you want an email giving you some other suggestions for the top ten. I want no, an go back. email on suggestions for any part of this document. Okay, go go back. Go back up. Okay, now there's three. Okay, right here. So you you asked me to look at purpose of the historic preservation plan. Correct. Uh, what about the other two? The overview of Northboro history and preserving Northboro history. Overview of North Pro history. No, I, I, I'm doing that. I, I stole some things. Uh, Beth Finch McCarthy gave me something that was very interesting. And in one of the, um, and she remembered to tell me that one of our reports, one of our uh, inventory reports by, done by past the fellow did a really good summary of the history of North Pro. So I'm going to cut that right out and stick it in there. So that's, that's I'll, I'll take responsibility for that. That's the overview of North Pro history, and I'll I'll take responsibility for preserving North Pro history pre twenty twenty one. I've got a bunch of documents that I just have to start uh, sorting through for this. Okay. What I really okay. need you guys all to do is to you know look at this little by little and say a miss something should be included that we missed or the format's not quite right. Um, what I'm what I'm hoping to do is a month from now. I'll probably give. I'll probably review with you the um, overview of North Pro history. You know, just do sections at a time when we meet, rather than try to do the whole thing at once. Okay. The um, section that you mentioned about accomplishments, you said the things, the accomplishments pre twenty twenty one. Yeah, preserving North. Yeah, is, right here. That's that section. Okay, that's where you're going to have accomplishments of the uh, commission. Of everybody, yeah, the society, okay. the commission. And, and a lot of this is in the master plan. I just got to go to the master plan, and copy, cut, and copy it out. Okay. So, Bob, are you doing the section for purpose of a historic preservation plan? Is that what uh, I am? Yes. Okay. But I'm not. I still have some questions about it, so I'll I'll, I'll go over with Norm, just yeah. with some of my ideas. Okay. Hey, Norm. Yeah. Uh, is this uh, like an out? Are you going to make this into an outline, like kind of like a table of contents? So each one of these sections would be, you know, section one, section two kind of thing. Is, is that what you mean? Yeah, there, there will be a table of contents, right, with, a, with pages. And, yeah. So each one of these headings that you have on the different sections are going to be section one, two, three, four. Well, yeah, I won't. Uh, right now, I'm not calling them sections. I'm calling them what's in blue would be the highlight of an outline. So the outline would have preservation plan committee and they would have a page. And then the top 10 priorities would have a page, purpose of historic presentation. You know. So those would be that'd be the outline. So are you thinking preservation plan committee would be section one? Well, uh, I could put the word section one, but if you want, if it makes you feel more comfortable, that would be called section one. Yes. No, I'm, I'm just asking, yeah. is that, is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Is that so what? preservation plan would okay. be section one, uh, near term would be section two. Yeah. I see where you're going with that. That, that, that's, uh, that's correct. But chapter one, chapter two. Yeah. If that makes it clearer. Sure. But that's how I'm, I'm look. That's how I'm thinking. Okay. Um, would you think about adding an introduction somewhere to this or is that or is that part of the master plan the intro um there is no introduction and maybe you're right maybe there should be a paragraph or two with an introduction of some kind what one thing norm that they did in the state plan which you could do is section one was kind of in, introductory chapters so what you have here is the preservation plan committee, the top 10 priorities, a purpose, et cetera. This would all fit, fit under introduction. So you wouldn't have to write a separate introduction section. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. That's, that's, what they, that's what the state did. They had a section one, they had an introduction, but then they had a few other sub, -sec, sub chapters, history, uh, state 
preservation plans. They gave a review of the various plans that they did. You know what I'll do then uh, next when we meet next month. One I'll put on one page. I'll put what would be like a table of contents and see how it breaks out. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and then and we'll go from there. Yeah. You know, I, I assume that at some point, you know, when when this is done, this is going to be up on the town website somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Or, or maybe our section of the website or something like that. That would be one goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me just see what this has been very helpful. You guys have given me the kind of feedback I was looking for. So we went, uh, this is the next one. I wanted to, some of them I wanted to highlight. These are the ones that are kind of like the core of the plan. So this one here is promote the protection of antique properties, which includes buildings, structures, documents, artifacts, landscapes, and agricultural lands. Um, so when, when you go through this, it's the same kind of thing. I've, you know, I've just labeled them a, a different topic. So I live, uh, topic A, topic B. What I'm trying to do here is extract <coughs> as much information as we already have and putting it into this document. So the protection of the antique property is one of the things that had come up are things that are on the National Register of Historic Places. We already have information from several years back that tells us exactly what buildings and properties and structures should be considered for the National Register. And I'm incorporating, all I did was take those, take that information from that, those documents and put them in different tables. And I tried to, I don't know if I got the tables in here yet. Yeah. So for example, this is, uh, you may have seen these before. And so it's an individual, for this table, it's individual buildings identified for potential National Historic Register. And then I put a comment in orange if I knew what the status was of it. So for example, this is a good one. We applied for the Gale Library to be on the National Register. The Mass Historic Commission said that it could not be on the register because of the new modern edition. So that's, you know, that's off the table. Um, and then in other ones, uh, this other table is individual structures and objects identified for potential national historic registration. Again, these tables are coming right out of a document we had from 10 years ago. So they recommended three, two railroad bridges. Well, the, we contacted the railroad company uh, some time back and they said, absolutely not. They have no interest in putting new bridges on the national register. So, you know, so I'm trying to fill in gaps of information from the past to be honest, well, none of us really remember or even know about. The Mary Goodnow Burial Ground, the Mass Historic Commission, they gave us permission to nominate it. So that's been sitting for about five to six years. Uh, Debbie, uh, Deb, 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 Deb is the last name. Leslie, she may have been with you. Deb, uh, Deborah Como. Como, thank you. Debbie Como was really good on this. and She got us to that point, but that's a loose end that we just haven't followed through. Mm. And then, you know, where we are with the current old Howard Street ground. And, you know, the burial street, the burial ground in Brigham Street is also a possibility. Um, and then there's this whole thing on districts, possible districts for National Register. And I just, again, it's just information that was given to us that this is another format to put it in. Um, things we should be thinking about down the road. I'm very hesitant to put dates on any of this stuff because it's driven by who has time and it's driven by what the priority things might pop up and go away. Uh, like for example, the town center, the Boston Post Road property is a national register. That might come, that might come up quick as people start to consider how the downtown district is supposed to look down in the future. So that, that might take a priority versus some of these other options. Wait, where was that? This oh, there is, it is. The, uh, the town center. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they recommend that it could be put in the National Historic Registration. And even all of these, even although all, all of these tables, I may have to change the wording, they were all identified as possible National Historic Registration sites. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is most of them could be historic districts or most of them could be considered for uh, 
preservation restrictions by the owner. So there's a there's always three there's always three things in play for all of this list: the register, the national register, historic district, or a preservation restriction. What about the Grange? The Grange. Uh, it should be on here. It should be. Is it on here? Mm -mm. there. Yeah. Yeah. Towards the bottom. Oh yeah. There we are, right there. Grange. Yep, Ten School Street. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there. Oh, okay, I was looking yeah. at. Yeah, the Grange is there. Here, we'll highlight it so we all know. Thank you. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Uh, so I'll go back. Where I got into that. So that's the tables. Um, Norm, as part of the you go talking about uh, new historic districts, do we have a listing in the introduction as to the current historic districts? Um, it would have, it was definitely going to show up in one of those sections that hasn't been written yet. Okay. But it, it, it'll, maybe it has to be brought, maybe it needs to be more visible rather than buried in a paragraph. So uh, when we get to that section, why don't we chew on, on the best way of, of doing that? Maybe that's a table that should be put in too. So go down the list of different things that, uh, we've talked about over the years and see if I've missed something or if there's a better way of presenting it, I'm more worried about how it's presented. Is it is this a good flow? Um, for example, this one here is the one of the is expand the historic assets inventory. So when we just a reminder, when we did the inventory, it was for all buildings built before like 1910. The state says anything that's over 50 years old could be inventory. So we got between 1910 and 1970. That we could conceive of the inventory. We should scratch our heads and think about what think about what's what should we do, what could we do for that? Um, do we want to consider things like Northgate, which was built in the 50s and it was had a huge impact on the town? Do we want to consider getting an inventory on those on, on those properties? Uh, it's not a discussion for now, uh, but it's part of this is that to put it, put a sentence in, knowing that in the future somebody can say maybe it's time. Might be a good candidate for a sign. It might be a good candidate for a sign too. Yep. And uh, I don't have a list of signs because the old list I had for signs, believe it or not, we put them all up. So we, we, we should probably consider a new list of signs for uh, coming years. This one, this last one that I will talk about tonight is the um, goal three, which is repurpose surplus town buildings and community needs. The master plan really wanted to save some buildings and find community uses for them. It's not always the reality. It's not always reality for a lot of these buildings, but that's, you know, it, it's certainly worth putting it in. So what I've gone through is essentially put the status of each building that was identified with the statuses of that property today. So I, I, I talk about White Cliffs, where it, is, where it sits today. You know, um, I mentioned the Westboro Hospital grounds, where we are as of two days ago. <laughs> so um, 13 Church Street, you know, I, I mentioned that it's, the town put it up for sale. So, you know, and, no sale has occurred. So that's just, it's, it's really, most of these are just where the building is today. I'm not progressing, I'm not, I'm not trying to say where it will be 10 years from now. I'm just trying to say like the you know, Boundary Street area has been a, another area that keeps coming up. It's a large old farm area um, for West Main Street. Um, trying to kill me with the apostrophe in the 1950s? Um... Just for you, you'll fix that. Just for well, is, is, but I didn't do it on all of them. See, well, of course, 1800s, I didn't yeah. do it. So I, I'm, I'm learning. Oh, yeah. Um, is 4 West Main Street considered, is it cultural value? Because it's not historic, correct? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, but it, in this case, in this case, it comes under this, it was put in the master plan specifically as a uh, repurpose, it's called repurposing town owned buildings. Oh, town owned, okay. So 
it falls under that. Okay. Does, the, does the town own that building? Mm -hmm. uh, they will in short order, a couple of years. <laughs> And yeah, they, I, put they, in, I put in Main Street also, uh, 63 Main Street, the current town hall, which is a town-owned building. And depending what they do, what the decision is for a new town hall, then that this building could conceivably be vacant. So I, I'm just putting in where things are today. I don't understand this one, uh, this next one. We're appropriate, utilize <coughs> surplus municipally, municipally owned properties as community spaces while we use studies are in progress. Well, okay. I, I mean, I can't, I can't expand on that is what I'm saying. I mean, an yeah. example would be the town hall, right? Well, the example, actually the woman who wrote this, the example was Whitecliffs. She, uh, she had given an example of other places where building a very similar situation where Whitecliffs was and what, what they were able to do, which we cannot do in this town is they were able to utilize the space, not the building, but the ground space for concerts and different things to get people interested in the property. Um, but because of our insurance purposes, uh, nobody's allowed on the property. But, but she, she was a driver that get people involved with it somehow. So we're, that's why there's a we're appropriate in there. It's not appropriate for white place. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, the town, so if the town hall ended up moving as you just follow up on the, the paragraph right before where it says it's not meeting our needs. Yeah. So, so that could be a, a, a it could be used as, I, I, there's a real master plan topic dwelled a lot on community space. So that's why it's popping up in different areas. Norm, if, can you? If, if you think of other things, this is where I need, you know, this, just send me an email, say, hey, this section could consider putting this in, something like that. That's why I need you to scratch your heads. The only possibility for this one would be would be the fire station also if once it moves. That's a good point. The fire station. Building too. The fire station. That's so I, I just said that I agreed. I didn't, I wasn't sure to go down, but we you know we could continue to go down building by building. There's not a ton of them. Actually, I don't know. Do you do you all realize that the if you go down Route 20 heading to Marlboro, just before the Marlboro line is the uh Sterrebrook Brook barn, set back a little bit, big white barn kind of yeah, thing. I know that. Yeah, the yeah. town owns that. Really? Yeah, the town owns that. Ah, that's that's not well known, but it's on it's on town land when they bought uh, the rights to that land. So Was that, that the right. Heitzma, the old Heitzma property? Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. So we own all that. Yeah, all the way over to Brown Boundary Street. The, yeah, uh, yeah. Public so Works owns it. But there's all these signs up there about private property keep off. I I I I uh, it could be. Because I, I used to hike around there and came came in the back way and there was all these signs to uh, that it was private property. Yeah, it was I, that that barn that you have a picture of it, right? Somewhere. Yeah, I added. I, I put a picture in there. It was more to me to remember that, that we own the town does own that barn. Um, and then the the last one is another one that it's a uh, this one here. Identify and support reuse efforts for town owned historic properties, prioritizing future use by the town community groups and cultural organizations. To me, it's the same goal as the previous one, but I just, like right now I just said, yeah, we support that goal. Like, why would we fight it? You know? hmm. uh, um, <clears throat> I won't go through these other ones at this point. Um, these are the tables. So these are the houses. This is a table of the houses that um, we sent a letter to find out if they had interest in preservation uh, of the property. This we did that almost a year ago. So that's the list of the houses. This is a photograph of all the houses which we had done then. And they, I, I threw the barn in just uh, completeness, I guess. Mm. <clears throat> so the only thing I'm looking for at this point, and I've got some of your comments which are helpful, is Think of something I've, we've missed that should be included, or the, if the format should be completely different. Um, the core, again, the core of it is that last section, that the stuff that has to do with the, the, the true preservation plan. And think about, should we try to put 
timelines on things like near term, mid term, long term, or should we just leave it up to see what the future holds? Um, those are kind of the feedback I'm looking for. Hmm. It's a lot to think about. It's good. Does this get submitted to the state? The state that reviews it for comment. Uh, we also have to get the planning board to review it and comment. And probably I, since some of this is involved with uh, conservation. They probably should review it and comment. Not certainly not yet. I, I noticed in the state plan they list all the uh, local town preservation plans that they have on file. Yeah. And they uh, and none of the boroughs have it, like Marlboro, Northboro, Southboro, or Westboro have a plan. I had, I had, I had to have that printed out for me. And there's most of the state historic preservation plans for the individual towns are old. Very, very few of them have been done within the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. least the last 10 years. So, so there's a real push to put, get preservation plans in place. And going back to the conversation we had, I had with um, uh, not Michael Steinitz, but uh, the other fellow that I worked closely with, uh, grew up in Northville too. Chris Skelly, huh? Chris Skelly. Thank you, thank you, Bruce. Chris Skelly. Um, he'd like us to have a plan in place, and he's really not all that worried about the format. He just wants, like, just get some, put your thoughts on paper. So. There, Norm, is there um, is there an expectation for you know revising this every once in a while or every you know every few years or is there anything governing that? We could make a note of that. I don't know. Well, like Bob mentioned, the state does it every every five years. Bob, is it something like that? I think their their goal is five years. It's been like five to seven years in the past, mm -hmm. and it covers a, a range of two or three years. When they actually do it, should it be revised at some point? Probably. We could put a we could put a recommended revision date. That might make some sense. You know? yeah. yeah. And what about the? I mean, I know a lot of this is coming from the from the the master plan. Is there uh, any kind of cadence for that as well? I think the master plan is like every ten years, roughly. Am I right on that? Does that ring in a bell? I think it's it's considerably longer. I think it might be like 15 to 20 years that they're good for mm. because it takes two years to, to even redo it and then a year to two years to start to implement it. Mm. So we can put it 20 years. We can put 20 <laughs> years and let the next group worry about it. <laughs> but this one, this is a smaller part of it. So this could possibly be done a little bit more frequently, I would say. Sure. I think one would one would hope that once you have the core of it done, that uh, updates would be minor. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And that's the thing. If the master plan is not changing, you know, simultaneously, then it makes it a little bit easier to just change, you know, our piece of of mm -hmm. it's still connected to the same master plan goals. Yeah, you, you can evaluate if some of your goals are working, and if they're not, then then revisit how to try to make them work. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do course correction, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so for this go around, I've got the information I need from you for today. But like I said, please just email me, just and just direct them to only me, so we don't do, uh, we can keep this on the legit. Just send me comments, that would be helpful. Okay. All right. Yeah. Very nice. You ready to get off of that? I am. <laughs> great, great job, Norm. Thank you so much for doing yeah. this. This yeah. is good, Norm. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Good. It's actually interesting to do. Um, Mike, did you want to say anything about the architectural, uh, agri archaeological sites? Uh, really not. Anything has changed as far as I'm aware of. Um, okay. I mean, I could I could rehash a little bit of, you know, what we talked about last time, but I don't I don't really see the need for that. The only the only comment I would have is um, give some thought about what a um, 
uh, request for proposal would look like? What the, I'm trying to think of the right term, you know, you know the term better than me. What would be the core part of a proposal for a um, archeological uh, evaluation of the town? Yeah, I, I actually uh, have some examples that I could refer to from the people that uh, I spoke with. They, a couple of them sent me some examples. I thought I sent that to you. Well, you, you may have sent it to me, but I think it's probably, we might be pretty within the, this, within the next month or the month after at one of our meetings, it probably would be nice if we all had something to look at. Okay. Yeah, and then well, start, start, start a discussion about um, how we would proceed and, and what it would entail and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I would think the first step would be to prepare an RFP, request for proposal. And I, you know, I have some examples uh, of some of that from the people I spoke with. And I think I sent out uh, the Groton uh, archeological survey, uh, the plan for Groton to everybody. It's, it's a fairly large document. I hope you guys could, uh, yeah, you, you could did download send it. it. Yeah. I, I'm sorry? You, no, you did send that to everybody. Okay. That, was, that was good. Yeah, and I, and I think, uh, it has a description in there on it's either that one or another one where they have a scope of work described as to the basis of what they were doing. And, you know, that, that would be pretty much where I would start with. So uh, the, the question I have is uh, related to kind of procurement rules in the town of Northbrook. I mean, I could, I could put something together, as far as a request for proposal, but uh, does Northboro follow particular procurement rules when it comes to, uh, you know, soliciting bids from oh, yeah. contractors to do work for the town? Or? Uh, yeah, we, we, absolutely. It's a minimum of three bids. Um, There's it, all kinds of rules on, on that. But for our purpose, you know, I think uh, we would we would work with um, uh, the not the accounting department, but we would work the per we'd work with the town hall to figure out how best to do this. We've done this before, but I think our role right now is, is if you could take the information you have from those multiple sources that gave examples, and if you could just write what you would think would be a good scope of work, even if it's just cut it and paste it out of those documents, just something that's called a scope of work for the uh, archaeological sites survey, I think that would be helpful. Okay. You know, for us, so, so it's so, so we can start to get tuned in the, of the terminology. You know what we'd be uh, what we'd be asking for. We're, we're months away from we're months and months away from getting the town involved in terms of sending this out for quotes. Um, but if we start to get the pen to paper, because there's a couple of things that even if we wanted to do it for next year for the. Uh, so the, if you go through the cycle, uh, if, you, if we would decide we want to do this with the uh, Community Preservation Act funds, uh, those proposals are due in the fall, November, December timeframe, uh, which is because we only meet once a month. It's around the corner. Um, also, if we wanted to get a subsidy from the state, those grant requests are also due in November. So we really kind of have to, if we're thinking that we want CPA money for next year's town meeting, you know, we've got a November dateline coming up. So I think what we want to do, in my mind, is get an idea for a scope of work and see where we are. And we'll have to make a decision if we're going to try to get funding uh, for a year from now, or if we're going to go for funding two years from now because of the, because of the sequencing of uh, the time. Yeah, that, that the timing issue is something that I've kind of scratched my head about because when you go to the CPC for funding, do you have to have uh, your selection for the, for the contractor that you want to use and have the winning bid from all that uh, solicitation that you've already gone through all set in place? Otherwise, you can't really provide a particular you know, number if you haven't already gone through the uh, solicitation and award process. 
what we've done in the past in this situation is what we've done is get estimates from multiple companies, not quotes, but ballpark estimates for what this kind of number, this kind of effort would take. That's the number that we would put in the CPA request, the estimates. Um, and that's so do you then, after you get the money from the CPC, then do the solicitation for three quotes after that? We've done that before. We, we have, that is the practice we've used before. That explains why, for example, today I mentioned that we, we, we put in $8,000 to purchase two interpretive signs because we got estimates that were $4,000 a piece and they came in closer to $3,000 a piece. So I know some of the other departments will get the actual quote in, and we could try to do that if we have time to get the actual quote and put that quote in the CPA request, uh, which is what you, actually what you guys did for the historical society. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, I think to me, the, the first thing is uh, what a scope would work would look like and discussing the amount us, amongst ourselves to see if this is a project we really need to consider doing and then start to work out what kind of time frame we're working in. Uh, it's a challenge. I've done this before. It's a challenge to try to get the state to pay for half of it. Because one thing is they say, well, we'll pay for half of it if you demonstrate that you can pay for the other half. Then you have to say, well, we don't know if we can pay for the other half because we're asking for CPA funding and we won't know till we won't know till town meeting. So then they need to be convinced that that's a high probability that we would get the money. It's, it gets complicated. Why would you, you just ask? Have to, but I think we're not there yet. We're, we're really there is, is this, uh, how much would this project roughly be? What would be in the scope of work? Um, and then decide what, um, what the best approach would be. So, okay. I so found you're asking all the right questions, Mike. You're just, you're, you're getting the right, those are the right questions to ask, especially early on. I mean, why would you ask 50% from Mass Historic uh, Commission if you're going to go to the CPC and get funding for the full amount? Because it comes down to this. CPC funding is getting tighter and tighter. And if we can say, look, instead of $35,000 for this project, we can do it for half of that, uh, they will pat us on the back and say, thank you very much. Look at the money that they put into the town common. Uh, what was the grant they got for the town common from the state? About 250000 something like I that? I want to say two hundred. Yeah, it was, it was a significant so, amount. So yeah. th th this, is a, this is kind of an expected thing that if there's other sources of funding you can get, you should be trying to get it. Yeah, right. absolutely. You know, especially when it's not to get, you know, it's one thing if it's a $5,000 or $2,000 thing, but this, this could be $15,000, $17,000. It's like, I think they would thank us if we could get the money. You know, the state preservation plan, their first objective was to, what they say was expand community-wide historic and archaeological surveys. And they talk about funding of those. So that's their first priority. Oh, wow. Well, that's so I'm wondering, so um, I would think, and they, they're also, they also talk a lot about outreach to towns to help towns. So I would imagine that they might be able to recommend who could give quotes for oh, something yeah. like that. Um, uh, Mike, it might, get, uh, Mike did kind of do that. Oh, right. Okay. Well, uh, just not to go backwards, but I was going to mention as a comment, which I forgot that the historic plan that you have doesn't mention anything about archaeological sites. So I was oh, it wondering. doesn't? Here we go. <laughs> that, that's a cute I, I, th I kind of thought that was intentional. So I didn't know. Oh, it wasn't. It was oversight. Yeah, Norm, that was going to be one of my comments. <laughs> I just figured that it was something that we weren't going to do as part of the historic preservation. Plan. No, no, don't read that into it at all. I just okay. read that as an oversight. Just uh, my mind went blank. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll move off to the last couple of topics, which are pretty quick. Gold Grange Hall has been sold. Really? It's sold. It has been sold. I talked to the realtor. Uh, it will be converted into a single family home. Um, nice. Wow. So that's good news. That was on the uh, chopping block. Yeah. So I, uh, I did get the name of the owners. I got to look it up and send them a nice letter. 
Thank you very much. Hmm. Wonder if they're gonna keep the stage. <laughs> I, they got kids, maybe. <laughs> During COVID, yes. Yeah, it's one heck of a puppet show. <laughs> uh, the all state grounds uh, demolitions. I sent the letter and I just got a letter from the Mass Historical Commission and they sent the letter and I can find, here it is. I wanted to read you one sentence from the letter. Um, so this is coming from the Mass Historical Commission and it's being addressed to the DCAM, the Division of Capital Asset Management uh, regarding the demolitions. So the Mass Historic Commission looks forward to consulting with the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance to explore alternatives that would eliminate, minimize, or mitigate the adverse effects of the proposed demolitions. Hmm. So I use the word mitigate, which is the same word we were using in our letter. What can you do to help us here? What can you do to mitigate our problem? Um, and what I found out late this afternoon, they uh, asked if I was available for a walkthrough of Chauncey Hall this Friday at 12.30. I said, yes, uh, it would be good if maybe somebody else joins me. Um, I don't want the whole group of us, but it's always good to have another pair of eyes. I assume we're going inside the building. When I spoke to the fellow, he said uh, the building is safe. It's just they won't want the fire department in there fighting fires. So I'm assuming we're going inside, take a look, see um, before it gets demolished. That would be the call would be to take some more photographs. Sure. So. Let me know if you're interested. It's uh, 12.30 at Chauncey Hall uh, on Lyman Street. Let's see. Let's see. Friday, I have a phone call with the woman who's doing the National Register for the Howard Street Cemetery. She had some questions and it's just easier to call people and do emails sometimes. The last topic in the new business is, are you guys familiar with One Lyman Street? It's at the intersection of Lyman Street and Bartlett. Yeah, I'm sure Millie's in. in yep. <laughs> with that. Um, Bruce may have been, a few of us may have been involved. That building was, um, demolition request was put in for that building in 2015. We reviewed it. And we put a six month delay on it because uh, we wanted them to see what he could do about salvaging the barn. The, the, the little Cape house really isn't as historic as the barn. Um, put in a storage facility or something, right? So yeah, no, no longer a storage facility. It's gone through a whole bunch of iterations, but the fact is uh, they are putting in, the demolition request is expired. It's been six years ago. So they are putting in a new demolition request so that will come in front of us again. Uh, I hope to get it on the April meeting, I'm hoping they can take, I don't have to move it up from there. So you will be seeing a request for demolition of the property that we already addressed uh, six years ago. So it's, it's kind of like, it has a feel like we did on, on West Main Street. We put a six month demolition delay and here it is seven years later, <laughs> still not demolished. Um, so we'll have to talk about that. And I just wanted to give you a heads up in case you hear about one Lyman Street. Okay. Mm. Um, next meeting date, April 21st. Sounds okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, Norman, I just actually wanted to add a couple things that, that were brought up at last meeting. Okay, good, um, good. About how something like a... Um, you know, an archaeological or historical survey gets triggered based on, um, you know, how would the planning board, for instance, know if something was significant or not? Um, I know that was something we had had touched on. And, That's uh, right. I remember you mentioned that. Yeah. And basically what happens in this, this specific one is for um, the one on Bartlett Street, but Apparently when somebody submits for a subdivision, um, that triggers automatically an impact report. And in the impact report is historical or ar archeological um, uh, potential impact on anything historical or archeological. Is that in our current bylaw? 
It is, but the question huh. becomes, how does an applicant know if there is something historical or archeologically significant on their property? Well, they, then the bylaw should read that they should contact the Historic District Commission. Yes. Um, well, it, it, uh, something automatically goes to them. A, a, a paperwork automatically goes to the MH. Um, oh, Mass Historical Commission. Yes. Yes. That, that, so that. They have to, and then a form has to come back that says it's clear. We, so, but we, that's only for subdivisions at this time. I believe we, we regularly get letters from MHC and, and some of their contractors for a variety of things, especially for cell towers. We, oh, for cell towers, that's or, different. Yeah, no, it's different, but the, but the process is the same. If the cell okay. tower is influencing something historic, then we get a letter from MHC asking, asking our committee, is that cell tower going to affect anything historic? Okay. So, which is what happened when they were putting in the, the new uh, cell tower in the steeple in the church. So there are, there are some dots connected uh, for other applications. Where so you, don't, you, you never got one for the one that uh, on the subdivision on Zero Bartlett? I've never got one about any kind of subdivision in 15 years. Interesting, okay. So there's either a hiccup in the system or, or it just it didn't call for it. Um, I'll, I'll check on that. There was a, there was a, uh, a project notification form and a archeological survey done for the cell phone tower and back of Pendleton square. Do you know, uh, where there's a, uh, I think it's called Carney. Oh, Carney Park. Yeah. Well, it's Carney. Yeah. I think it's Carney Park. It's a trail that goes along the aqueduct. Yeah. Uh, there's a cell phone tower in back of the building that's right adjacent to that. It's called uh, Gallagher Square or something like that. And uh, that cell phone tower had a uh, project notification form done and the Mass Historic Commission required them to do an archaeological survey. And that was done uh, as part of the permitting of that um, cell phone yeah. tower. Do you know how many years ago? That was quite a while ago. Pendleton was uh, it wasn't it wasn't that long ago. I would huh. say, um, I don't know. I'm going to guess and say 10 years ago. I mean, I guess that's a long time. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, I was kind of wondering why that would trigger a archaeological survey, um, but it did. Uh, it could be just that when they have to submit the the PNF forms, the project notification forms, the Mass Historic Commission, the state archaeology guys, if they have any indication in their database that there's a potential for archaeological sites, they, they come back and ask them to do the survey. And it might completely bypass us. I guess mm. that it would if you're not getting, if, you're, if you, Norm, are not getting any notification that that's going on, then that's probably what's going on it was a significant fine too as i recall huh i hmm. may have got a weird if it was 10 years ago i may have got a notice of it and i just don't remember it that's possible i mean i if you want i could if, if you really want i can go dig that information up it's in the it's on my desk but um because i still have the, the package with me i haven't brought it over to kathy jolder yet and i i remember that one in particular because i'm I, you know, I've hiked and walked that area quite a bit. And so it, it struck me as interesting that that spot was a, was a site. Huh. Yeah, I'm just looking at my date, my email, uh, not my emails, but my information. And, uh, no, it's a different one. But I, I mean, there was files, a lot of files. I, I, I recall, files, like, one, two, three. There I'm was fixed. a lot of stuff. There was a lot of stuff on there. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I guess, Millie, it's just a matter of um, <clears throat> uh, are the practices being followed or is there a hiccup in the system somewhere, that kind of a thing? Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's, a good, it's a good point. We should really understand what triggers these things and make sure that we're in the loop when it comes to, you know, if somebody has to file something with the State Mass Historic Commission that we get 
CC'd on it or you get CC'd on it. And we have a say in it, right? Yeah, no, that's, that's the way it should work. Yeah, uh, that makes sense to me. So I guess I, I'll just continue to, to get some answers and see if there's something that, that we can do to close the loop a little bit. One does, thing the planning, does planning board get involved in any of that? Well, in this particular circumstance, because it's a subdivision, we did get an impact study. Okay. And, and um, we got that from the, they had to file it and we got it from the Mass Historic Commission. Um, but it also was part of the aqueduct, which is also historic and uh, archeologically significant. So they also had to file forms with um, the um, uh, ar archeological historical. Are you on, Amelia, are you on the planning board? Yeah. Oh, okay. But that's, um, so they, they had to submit some other things, but I was just curious as to another, other plans that they've done, we didn't get historic forms or impact from. So I was just curious as to whether it's the subdivision, which yes, it does trigger an impact study, but also the, uh, the fact that it is on a, a known archeological um, site owned I'm, by the it, MWRA. It seems to me in, in my you know, minimal understanding of this is that the call is made by Mass Historic Commission, MHC. They make the call. Like the letter from Brona, the state archaeologist, seems to be the thing. And they have to submit the PNF form to Mass Historic Commission. So she sits down and kind of makes the call. She has the database right. that what we have copies of now. But ultimately, it's her office or her that says, yeah, you need to kind of do an archaeological survey. And that whole process could bypass us completely. Right. And it, it seems it did. If you guys didn't get, if, if Norm, we never got anything, yeah. which it doesn't seem like we did. It just didn't occur to me. Is, mm -hmm. there, is there something you could forward us? Well, I actually might be able to share the, the, the piece of paper from yeah. the MHC. Is that what you're looking for? Or Yeah, just uh, so we can appreciate what, we, what we're missing. Well, it is in the subdivision rules and regulations bylaws. Okay. Do you have a Do you have a number for that? Do you have a? Yeah, it's ten dash twelve dash o six o for zoning, and I I can write this to you as well. Okay, I'd just like to take a look at that and see what we're missing. Yeah. Well, why this, would a Why would a cell phone? Is, what's that? Why would a cell phone tower trigger that? I don't. Cell phone towers are also under a special regulations, so I don't. I haven't looked into that one. Okay. Um, but it might be special regulations, like subdivisions have special rules and regulations. Okay. Um, so that's the only thing I could think of is cell phone towers um, also have their own, or wireless communication has their own uh, approvals. Was there another, you said you had a few things, Millie. Was there something else? Um, no, I mean, I think if you want, I can just share the piece of paper that has the, 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 from the MHC that, that this particular applicant got it's, it's public information. Um, but if you don't need to see that, that's fine too. Oh, I'd like to see that. Um, because what I can do is try to find out what is the chain of command on this and what triggers what, and then how, if we need to close the loop. Okay. Let me see. I think that's, I, I think that's important. Yeah, if I can possibly share the screen, I'll try. I've never done this before, so I might need some help, Leslie. So, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, do I have to put it on my desktop first? Is that what I have to do? Yeah, I would open. Yeah, open what you're sharing. Okay. So then I just lost you guys. <clears throat> How do I get back to you guys? It's I can time. see you. You can see me. <laughs> yeah, we see you. Yeah. So. See me? Okay, I can't see you guys though. Oh, I just made it bigger. All right, now how do I get back to you guys though? Well, you're sharing well, the screen. I... That's why you can't see us. Oh. Oh yeah, but then I lose the share screen button. Well, you don't care about looking at us. <laughs> okay. No, I think. No, I think you're not sharing it yet, right? You just found. You just lost the Zoom window. You're if you're juggling just on one screen, then you gotta. Um, 
Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, oh there you go. hey. Magic. Good job. Good job. Yeah, so that is what we got with respect to this piece of this subdivision. Um, and it basically says that the Mass Historical Commission looked at it and, and determined that there were no adverse effects. That's the impact statement we got on the Wachusett Aqueduct Linear Historic District. I don't know why we weren't contacted. I don't think we were contacted for that. Very funny. I would have thought we would have been contacted. I mean, they, the Mass Historic Commission absolutely has to be contacted, but usually they, usually we get, like, usually we would have been copied this notice or something. I'm kind of surprised we were out of the loop. Can you scroll up a little bit and see who's been CC'd on that? Verona has been our. This this is page 19 of 75. So no. <laughs> I don't know how much you want me to scroll. No, no, I only wanted to see who was copied on that. Uh, yeah, the Guria is company, of course. MWRA, of course, and yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just kind of surprising that we weren't copied on it, I guess. Okay, so uh, is Rona's becoming our best buddy here. So maybe, um, so th yeah, that's the question is, is how do we get notification? If well, I just did a print screen. So what I'm probably going to do is just send this letter off to MHC and say, I'm just curious how come we weren't notified. That's all. I'll okay. be polite about it. Yeah. But I have the whole letter right now. So I'm good. Okay. Yeah, they might have a different different towns might have different um policies, rules, regulations on who gets notified of this. Right, right. Yeah. I'll just ask it for and it's probably there's probably a good answer. It just we don't know that answer yet. Yeah, it, it, it may depend on whether there are formal hooks in there to notify towns or whether it's just a, hey, by the way, kind of thing. Yeah, th this is just sort of part of the uh, larger application process. So sending something out to the historical commission might be if there's nothing relevant, they don't notify us. And if there is, then they do. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I think that's probably accurate uh she she makes the call and then if there's the next step then perhaps we get the notification yeah if no findings so she's basically saying in this letter i haven't read it but it sounds like she's saying in this letter is based on everything i know there's no need to do an archaeological survey yeah, it's basically the third paragraph after review of additional information. Um, the MHC has determined that the project as proposed will have no adverse effect, but it's on, it's on the Wachusett Linear Aqueduct Linear Historic District. So that is pertaining to that district, which might be the only historically or archae archaeologically significant part of the project. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're uh, keeping us informed. That's very helpful, Millie. Yeah, again, I'm just curious as to how people know if they have something, if it's not completely determined already. So, yeah. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Thank good. you. Did anybody else have something else to add to the discussion? All right. Well, then, uh, unless you want to stay here the rest of the night, we can close this out. <laughs> I move we adjourn. Second. All right. Let me go through the roll call. Mr. Smith. I, I uh, accept. Mr. Swanson. Accept. Leslie. Yes, please. <laughs> Bob. Yes. Millie. Yes. And thanks for the good news about your reopening. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, that's really what we're here for, right? <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> I can't wait. Yes. 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 Mike. Yes. And I'm a yes. It's good to see you guys. We'll see you on April the 21st. Have a good 